the email just uh, in the short notice. Great, thank you so much. Okay, uh, uh, every, uh, everybody, welcome to this week's uh, HIT seminar. Today's speaker is uh, one of our own. Uh, we all um, graduated um, from Duke about two years ago, and um, he's, this, he's doing his first postdoc uh, in use, uh, at L, uh, actually, uh, he's a uh, formerly employee, employee of uh, UC Berkeley, uh, but you know, he's working from the lab. Even though he has been here for almost three years, but I think many of you have not seen him <laughs> very often because <laughs> um, like many other uh, new postdocs, he has been you know, studying or working from home or since he came here, almost. And uh, today's, uh, today's talk is very special because uh, we know that uh, this week is the National Postdoc Appreciation Day. So it's quite fitting to have a, uh, uh, we all give a talk um, uh, uh, today. And, and also um, next, I think next week, um, beginning of uh, October 1st, uh, he will start his new postdoc to, uh, at Los Alamos. So this is uh, also a fair way for him, uh, sort of speaking. Um, please uh, go ahead. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, actually. Uh, now I'm sharing the screen. Actually, I've, I've been in the office for, I think, consecutively more than three months, actually, before uh, the, the pandemic. So I'm, I'm, I'm still pretty sure that many of you have, have, have seen me uh, sometime, maybe two, almost two years ago. So the slides now? OK. Okay, so uh, nice to give this uh, hit seminar again after uh, two years of uh, research here. Uh, this pr uh, project is actually uh, uh, issued by, by me and Xinyan uh, at the beginning of this year um, uh, to study uh, jet energy loss and the momentum broadening in the uh, environment of electron ion collisions and to develop the, uh, the tools for jet tomographies uh, for, for these studies. Uh, actually, this is uh, a work that we collaborate here at Berkeley and the Berkeley Lab, and also uh, uh, our colleagues from South China Normal University, uh, and also Yuan Yuan Zhang, who, is, who, who was also here at Berkeley two years ago, and also uh, Hong Xixing from uh, uh, University of Science and Te Technology of China. There's a, a brief outline. Uh, first is the introduction about uh, jet tomography for nuclear medium. Uh, and then we'll, we'll talk about the, the main topic, this e-hydrogen event generator for such a problem. And we'll show you some application of this model to the DIS experiment, primarily to the Hermes experiment with some projection to higher energy collisions. Finally, I will give a summary. Okay. Uh, we know that in nuclear collisions, JET is a very useful tool to uh, probe the, the final state interactions between uh, high energy particles and the nuclear medium. And depending on uh, your collisions, these medium are quite different. So for example, in the nucleus nucleus collisions, uh, you create a currently confined medium, undergoes very complicated dynamics. And in this case, this uh, energetic proton will interact with uh, near thermal uh, uh, system of uh, partons and QCD matches. On the other hand, uh, if you go to DNS in a large nucleus, this final interaction, final state interactions happens between uh, the uh, hard partons and the, the ground state of the nucleus. And to some approximations, these are, uh, we can still consider this happens between the nucleons and the parton. So, by, by, by using the same tool, we can actually probe quite different systems and extract how the nuclear properties look like in the confined and confined system and relate this uh, modification to the jet and especially the momentum broadening due to these collisions to the microscopic structure of the nuclear material. A more quantitative way of uh, describing how much interactions happens between the jet use the so-called jet transport parameter, 
actually called this uh, Q hat. Uh, from a physical point of view, it's a direct measuring of the momentum button of the hard hard part hunt or object. Uh, it's that you, you you know the initial direction of the, for example, a, a quark from infinitely past, and then you you, you assume that there's some, for example, uh, perturbative interactions between the, the quark and the medium mediated by a gluon. And then you can compute the average transverse momentum uh, broadened by such a collision. And because this momentum, uh, this gluon carries the transverse momentum, you're actually going to be sensitive to uh, not only the collinear distribution of gluon inside the nucleus, and also its transverse momentum dependencies, especially for those gluons at uh, small x. Uh, in fact, you can relate this to more formally to the uh, gluon field correlators in the uh, nuclear uh, in, in the target. Of course, in DNS, you don't exactly have a, a quark that produced from the infinite past, but it's also created inside the medium by uh, a strike out by a virtual photon uh, from from the electron. And of course, this just becomes more complicated. However, in the large nucleus, we can focus on those secondary scatterings that happens on a different nucleons than the one that we trigger the heart. Uh, this is because in heart, uh, in, in large nucleus, the, the chance that you hit on a second nucleon is actually enhanced by a to the one third. So that would be the leading effect uh, for a large nucleus DIS. And in this case, you can assume that, uh, uh, that it is this. Uh, first nucleon's distribution can be factorized from the second one so that you can still define the q-hat parameters for this uh, uh, secondary gluon exchange. Okay. Now, is, now you have to see that this um, measurement of uh, momentum broadening is directly related to something about the gluons inside the target. But a direct measurement of delta PT, this momentum broadening, in, uh, for example, high beyond collision is very hard. This is mainly because we don't have the exact control of the orientation of the initial hard process. Uh, and also, we don't have exact control of the energy or the production channel of the part. So in, in these cases, people usually use like indirect ways uh, that you use in the fact that once you have momentum transfer, you are also going to induce part energy loss. and this part energy loss will also depend on Q hat parameter, and you can compare uh, the model predictions to, for example, the surface suppression of hydron spectra to extract the Q hat parameters. Of course, in this case, because of this uh, uh, difficulties and also the medium is very complicated, uh, the uncertainties for such extractions, uh, even from state of the art uh, work, is still quite large. Uh, of factor two uh, of two uncertainties. But these numbers are quite large. For example, in the uh, uh, medium with 300 MeV temperatures, you can get 0.2 to 0.5 GeV square momentum broadening per unit firm. In deep elastic scattering of large nucleus, the, the, the situation is much more, much more cleaner because in this case, you have control on the kinematics of the photons by analyzing the deflected electrons. So you can choose the, the exact frame where you align the hard process in the z-axis and measure the transverse momentum broadening with all the details uh, measured to very high accuracies. And this is uh, already been done at uh, the Hermes experiment. They measure the transverse momentum broadening uh, the, of EA collisions relative to the electron neutron collisions. And one can show that uh, this is actually directly proportional to the, in this case, the, the, the average uh, uh, quark transport parameter Q hat uh, in, 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 the, in the target. And actually people have been using this formula to do a global extractions, including uh, the semi-inclusive DIS data uh, experiments, uh, in, 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 including this uh, momentum broadening measurement, extract the uh, Q square and Burkin X dependence of the Q hat uh, parameter. At the same time, you also notice that in order to make this relation work, uh, to go from the measurable delta PT to Q hat, 
uh, you also need uh, some assumptions on what this fragmentation looks like in the, in, in the nucleus. And this fragmentation function will depend on both Z and more detailed, also on transverse moment. And especially in large nucleus, you expect uh, multiple radiative corrections and also non predictive modeling of how hybridizations uh, in the nuclear environment uh, changes uh, this quantity. So that's where uh, the, the, the usefulness of the, the model uh, on event generator comes in. It allows you to, to study uh, once you include all these nuclear medium effects, uh, whether you still have enough sensitivities in different free space regions to pin down the Q hat parameter. Okay, then let's talk about uh, this model that we're developing. Uh, so this model that the name is called E hygiene. Uh, a little background for the name is that so you're probably not unfamiliar with the name hygiene, which is high ion jet interaction generator. Uh, it is originally uh, an event generator developed by Xinyan and Miklos almost actually exactly 30 years ago for, 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 for study of jet quenching and mini jet, mini jet productions in nucleus, 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 nucleus collisions. And here, this electron, the E actually stands for electron, and it's uh, uh, applied similar idea to the VIS. Uh, as event generators, it will contain uh, the triggering of the hard process, how the photon uh, strike out a hard quark. And in the nuclear medium, we consider multiple uh, quark uh, nucleus interactions. And for, for those radiative gluons, it can also have uh, multiple gluon nucleus interactions. And such multiple collisions will modify the parton shower evolution of this system. Uh, which also, uh, this multiple collision will also also uh, introduce uh, new beam remnants because uh, the second nucleons will also be broken by uh, uh, relatively hard momentum transfer. And finally, we will develop a modified hydronization model for uh, the stream fragmentations when you have uh, beam remnants and multiple collisions. Uh, a little bit on, on, the, on, the, on the structure of the, the program, if you're interested, uh, is that right now, as the current phase of the, this development, we didn't start from scratch, but we take uh, existing event generators that has an EP mode, such as PCA, and in the future using maybe Sharpa, uh, as the, the, the event generator for, for baseline studies. In this case, uh, beams are electrons, uh, protons, and maybe deuterons, the small nucleus, and it samples hard uh, hard collisions, and also handles the, the, the beam remnants from the primary hard interactions. Uh, usually, this uh, event generator also includes a KT ordered parting shower to generate uh, Bramstrom gluons and the quark. And finally, they use a lone strain fragmentation function, a uh, lone strain fragmentation procedure to do the hybridization. In the e hygiene model, the, the center piece that we inserted is a multiple parton scattering model. We will talk about this immediately, which provides the multiple collisions that tells each other, uh, other modules how to in, uh, uh, how they should be modified by the minimum effects. Like the extra remnants, parton shower evolution, and the uh, modification to hybridization. Now let's go to this center part of the hygiene model is the multiple collisions between jet and the nucleus. We consider these interactions are still perturbative and can be considered as approximately uh, mediated by single gluon exchange. And the gluon carries a certain longitudinal fraction of the nucleon the momentum and a transverse K per. And if we focus on the region where this uh, uh, elastic collisions changes the virtuality of the hard part on with negligible amount, uh, you can estimate the dominant regions that contribute to this scatterings are those small XG gluons. So this XG are related to the Bjorken X by another power of uh, K per over Q square, where Q square is the hard scale. And if you consider the, the likely to provide a very hard kicks, then 
this uh, XG are usually much smaller than the Bjorken X. And then using this picture, you can write down the cross sections for uh, the quark to scatter with the, uh, a particular nu nuclear part, uh, nuclear uh, constituents, and it's re related to this uh, unintegrated Gluon distribution functions uh, as function of XG and K curve. And in the large nucleus, you have many of these uh, processes going on from different nucleons, and you can write down the rate for such collisions, which is just uh, the, the density of nucleons times this uh, binary collision that, uh, co co cross section. And in the current modeling, we take a very simple parameterization for this unintegrated Gluon distribution uh, at small x, actually borrowed from a, a form that used for CGC study in the past is that it depends on, of course, x, transverse momentum, and a saturation parameter. Uh, at uh, small x, it has a typical uh, power law dependence on x. In, in the transverse directions, at large paper, it has this uh, uh, weather curve Williams, uh, 1 over kt square for fall down, and it saturates when k curve is dropped below the saturation scale. The saturation scale is some, some quantity related to uh, this uh, jet medium interactions. So, so it's not exactly the same as the, the, the gluon saturation scale in, in the small x. And this QS is determined self-consistently by requiring that this QS as probed by a quark with momentum xb square, uh, it should be uh, equals to the gluon densities per unit area. And you'll see that QS shows on both sides of the equation, and you solve this equation so consistently, you get the uh, relation uh, on, on the left. Uh, actually, I think in this case, we put in the lambda parameters uh, minus 0.5 uh, to give you this uh, slowly increase with, uh, of QS with uh, XB. And it's roughly linear proportional to the thickness TA thickness of the nucleus and has a logarithmic dependence on the, the cube square. So that's the parameterization of what we think that the nucleon looks like. Uh, and this process at the same time also determines the jet transport parameter because for this multiple collision process, the QS square is, is actually exactly the average momentum broadening. Uh, you can also verify by integrating the collision rates weighted by momentum transfer square, and Q hat is just uh, to some color factors, saturation scale uh, square over the past lens. And this quantity has for, for quark has been plotted on the left. Actually, this quantity, uh, the author funds that are for, for, from this self-consistent procedure are fairly close to the values extracted from the global analysis, which, uh, uh, oh, I forgot the citation over here. Uh, uh, about from 0.01 to 0.03 GV square per Fermi. So this is uh, almost 20 times smaller than that in the, in the QGP. But because in DS you have a very clean environment, you can still measure this uh, small quantity to very high precision. Okay, that's the multiple collisions. And the immediate effect of this multiple collisions is the correction to part on Brown's line. Uh, especially to the gluon radiation from a quark. In this case, the, the correction from a secondary scattering uh, due to this transverse momentum uh, gluon has been worked out in uh, a series of work by Yuan Zhang and Xinian. Uh, so in their studies, uh, this uh, correction, this, the so-called double scattering correction to the radiative process actually depends on a lot of kinem kinematic variables, such as the uh, time differences between the first scatterings and the second, second scatterings, the kinematics of the double scatterings, the kinematics of the radiative gluons. Uh, it also interplays with the initial transverse momentum of the quark. Uh, at this very early stage of this project, we try to use a simpler formula and we take the soft gluon radiation limit of their, their, their full formula in this work. 
And so that's basically set this Gluon momentum fraction ZG to be much smaller than one, so that we will uh, just neglect uh, its interplay with the quark transverse momentum in this correction. And now, under such approximation, uh, you can uh, extract the medium modified splitting functions from the Bob calculations, and it has the general structures that look like this for a part on, uh, sorry, for quark that goes through the medium. The probability to split, split into uh, a gluon with momentum fraction ZG and the transform this momentum L perp, uh, you have the usual vacuum splitting function piece that gives you the uh, usual Diglap evolution. Uh, if we consider this process happens in the vacuum. And now we have the first stop has the other medium corrections, this is delta one, which still depends on the, 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 the path length. L, L, and depends on the splitting kinematics. And in this soft one limit, the general formula for this delta one uh, actually looks like this: is uh, some integration over all possible uh, secondary collisions inside the nucleus. Uh, it can happen anywhere along the path lines uh, with some, some given transverse momentum. And this is the probability for such a process to happen. And then there's some interference term between the vacuum and the medium, medium corrections. Here you notice that there's a, the medium size also comes into play, uh, which is shown in this phase factor known as the LPM suppression. Is that when the splitting is very high energy and collinear, the, the formation time for this process to happen is very long. And when this is so long, much larger than the size of the nucleus, uh, basically nucleus can cannot really see the differences between the, the two, two particles and one particles. And, and, and in this case, the medium correction that uh, strongly suppressed by this phase factor. And in this general formula, uh, the author doesn't assume any hierarchy between, between the secondary collisions transverse momentum and the splitting transverse momentum. So you do, do not completely factorize the medium part from the hard evolution. And you don't really need uh, to define a Q hat parameter for this to work. Instead, the medium effects comes with our microscopic assumptions that uh, these interactions are mediated by the, the gluon. On the other hand, so, so this will be one of the options that we implemented in e uh, in e Another option that we implemented is uh, the higher twist expanded results on top of this generalized formula. So this is uh, useful because a lot of previous studies are actually, especially uh, pre previous studies of jet quenchings in QGP actually apply this higher twist expanded results. And we want to test how, how different it is from the generalized formula. In this case, you expand the medium corrections in powers of the rescattering uh, re momentum over the, 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 the momentum of the splitting. Uh, of course, to do so in the large nucleus, you not only need this, but, but also you require that the, the, some, some more uh, strict requirements so that you can simplify this uh, phase factor as well. And finally, you get to uh, a quite widely used form to consider medium corrections, uh, the higher twist expanded results. And here, this uh, medium part, the soft part, gets completely factorized into a Q height parameter for the radiative process. I add the superscript radiative because, in principle, these parameters, although it has been factorized from the rest of the, the integration, can be different from the Q height defined purely elastic collisions. We will right away. OK. So now consider this why, why this can, in principle, be different is because when we make the uh, higher twist expansion, we expand everything in terms of k per over L per. But actually, the generalized formula uh, has most of its contributions around L perp equals to K perp, and after that, uh, the contribution again decays. So a natural cutoff uh, 
for this higher trace expansion is of course we, we, we will not uh, allow k prep to be too large which completely ruin this uh, expansion so in this case the relative uh, the relative q hat that we define for the higher trace formula actually has a different upper bound uh, uh, integration so we only allow transverse momentum risk so trans transverse momentum of the rescattered gluons to go as large as the, the virtuality scale. While for pure elastic process, it has a slightly larger uh, phase space. So in principle, these two parameters can be different. Now, how about uh, how about the the generalized higher twist? So we, we we have shown that in the, sorry the generalized formula doesn't really use a, a q hat parameter directly. But to compare with the higher twist Q hat, a similar quantity can be defined if we consider some integrated quantities such as the average number of the induced gluons. And to simplify the discussion, let's assume that uh, the multiple collisions has a typical Coulomb-like form uh, with some non-perturbative cutoff. And when we consider this, let's first look at what is the average induced number of gluons in the higher twist expanded results you integrate it over, uh, now integrate it over ZG and L per. And here you get the, the Q hat parameter that we have showed earlier. Uh, it uh, has the upper bound of allowable moment transfer up to the virtuality scale. And if you assume, assume fixed coupling, then this gives you uh, the density times a log of uh, virtuality over non productive cutoff. On the other hand, if we use the generalized formula, after we integrate over the, the full phase space of the relative gluons, we can redefine the momentum, uh, shift the momentum from L to L perb, which is minus K, just some, some trick to get this formula look closer to the higher twist one. And in this case, you end up with something similar, very close to the higher twist results, but with a different term in the place of the Q hat for uh, the previous case. And the biggest difference is that you have some different uh, kinematic limits on what type of momentum transfer is allowed. And in this case, you don't get this uh, logarithmic enhancement factor, but uh, linear dependence and even decreases with the, the virtuality of the splittings. So the takeaway message is that uh, we will expect that when we test uh, the model with these two different approximations for the relative process, even though we will give them the same macroscopic interactions between jet and medium, they are going to cause uh, actually different amount of relative energy loss, which is a quite important difference that we're going to see later. Okay. And... Uh, so, so a more, a more uh, uh, intuitive view is just to look at the single emission spectrum between these two cases. And, and you can indeed see that uh, the correction from the generalized formula are uh, on average smaller than the one that we used for uh, higher twist expanded results. Uh, uh, of course, there are two regions that they will eventually agree. First of course is the uh, large virtuality region where the how to expansion should work. Another one is when you go to very small ZG. So those, uh, in those cases, you are dominated by almost independent, uh, uh, incoherent, uh, small, uh, small formation time gluon emissions, and those are uh, contributions enhanced by directly by uh, a to, to the, to the size of the nucleus over L pair. So in these two regions, they do agree. Okay, uh, finally, let's, so that's uh, a lot of discussion for the single emission spectra that we implemented in the code. And now we will talk about uh, our schemes for uh, summing up multiple emissions. Now that we have the average number of gluon from both the uh, vacuum radiations and also medium corrections, let's just call them P vacuum and P medium. For those splittings that who, 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 whose virtuality are large enough uh, uh, compared to a non-productive scale, this non-productive scale in, in 
PP or sorry, in EP or in neutron collisions are just the default non disk in the in, in the pizza event generators. But once we start to consider nucleus collisions, we will replace the saturation scales for uh, for, 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 for this number. And if you consider hybrid trality splittings, this uh, hybrid trality way we consider that these multiple emissions are generated from the PT algorithm parton shower as often implemented in PCI and uh, Sharpa. Uh, the only difference is that we'll add the medium correction term to PCI. And for the case of LPERP that becomes smaller than, for example, the saturation scale, we consider the PT algorithm parton shower this picture is stopped to work because you you already enters the, the multiple collision uh, stage. And for this, we, we will um, try to model the corrections in this regime by modify how we handle hybridization. We consider when this happens, the, the P vacuum part will essentially becomes the fragmentation process in the vacuum. And all we need to do is to add the pure medium induced contributions to the this is fragmentation procedure. And for this, we take a, a, a program developed in, uh, in this work. So, so in this work, the authors assume that, okay, when, 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 when my partons virtuality drops too low, then I will just only sample multiple, let's call them fragmentation gluons from the medium corrections. Uh, and I will uh, take out their energy from the leading quark. And then I will hydrogenize this fragmented gluons and the energy lost leading quark independently using collinear fragmentation functions. What we implemented in the is very close to this idea is that we will also sample uh, this lower trality part from the medium contributions. Uh, but, but there's one, two, two essential differences. First, we will order this multiple emissions in terms of formation time. So for this very lower trality process, we can keep track of uh, uh, in precession of time, like which part of this uh, evolution happens inside the medium and which part will actually uh, happens outside of the medium, which uh, will be quite useful for, for future uh, interface to hydronic transport. And another difference is that we, of course, in this case, we don't have an independent uh, fragment once you combine uh, the parton from the parton shower and also the remnants from the primary collisions and the, uh, for example the secondary collisions we use the lone stream fragmentation uh, mechanism to connect them again into colorless streams uh, right now we also have uh, need to model what happens to this beam remnants after multiple collisions we assume that this uh, exchange of the gluon will break the original nucleons into a quark plus dipark pair which helps to form the new endpoints of the stream. And then from, from them on, uh, we will uh, always use the long stream fragmentation scheme. Okay, now the, here is uh, uh, some, some test runs for what this procedure looks like. So, so what I plot here is that is the box test. You initialize the hard part on in the box of nuclear matter. And you give the initial part on uh, one GV's virtuality and let it evolve. In vacuum, you will see that the virtuality always decreases uh, monotonically. After a few branches, it will reach the cutoff scale. And maybe in this case, on average, it will radiate uh, two or three times. Once you turn on medium effects, you will see some additional medium branches uh, at this high virtuality stage. Uh, that, that actually delays this uh, approach into to, to the saturation scale. And once you get down below this switching scale, because now the shower is actually uh, ordered in information time, you don't exactly get uh, always a decreasing output, but it more looks like a random motion uh, uh, in, 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 in this stage. Okay, so this is roughly a picture of what was happening in, in this model. Okay. Ah, okay. Now there's a final detail that I think is very worth mentioning, is that when when you start to implement both momentum broadening and the jet energy loss, these two effects are going to 
to correlate. Of course, there are quite trivial correlations, for example, depending on the pass length. If you, you happen to produce a hard process that goes through a shorter pass length, of course, in this case, both the energy loss and the momentum broadening will be very small. And in another case, if you happen to go through a large pass length, both of them will be large. But this is still a correlation on the average level because the and, uh, because in, in in, in nucleus collisions, because the Q hat parameter, as we see, so it's very small. And if you actually histogram the, the Poisson fluctuation of these multiple collisions, you will see that there's a, a huge chance that even your, 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 your scattering of a large nucleus, you, you still get zero collisions. And we consider when this happens, this Poisson fluctuations in multiple collisions should also be uh, reflected in the medium corrections. And remember, previously, we will always do the ensemble average on the medium corrections. So we cannot directly use that. Uh, instead, in the hygiene, we will first generate a sequence of multiple collisions subject to this Poisson fluctuations, and then replace that ensemble average of the collision centers by a sum of this event by event uh, 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 realizations of collisions and then sum their amplitude contributions to the medium uh, contributions. Of course, it will complicate the code a little bit, but this will guarantee that uh, whenever you don't have a collision, it will also guarantees that there's no medium corrections to the parton evolution. Okay, that's uh, maybe so much details for the model. Uh, now let's look like some real applications to real world data. I, uh, so we first try to describe the, the Hermes, uh, Hermes experiment. So this is for, for two reasons. First of all, there are really a lot of data uh, taken at uh, the Hermes experiment. They uh, perform this uh, fixed target DNS with electron energy 27 GeVs on virus nucleus from deuteronomy helium all the way to, to Zion. Uh, of course, with this energy, you don't get to access very small X regions, uh, and the typical Q square is also uh, quite quite low. It's about two to three GeV squares. But uh, because you don't have a very large Q square, uh, this com by comparing to the Hermes data actually let us to 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 get more sensitive to test on the medium modified fragmentation part of the hydrogen model. Okay, let's, oh, right. Before looking at the nuclear modification, we also test uh, whether the, the PCI-8 provides a reasonable uh, description of the, uh, some inclusive production of pi on the kion in, in, deuteron, in electron deuteron collisions. So here is the fragmentation function measured for pi plus, pi minus, k plus, k minus for electron deuteron collisions. And here you will see the ratios of PCA over experiments over PCA. The red lines uses the default PCA parameters and they somehow produce two hard fragmentation functions. Later we figure out that this probably field because the default PCA parameter has a, a quite large cutoff on what, what type of strings can be can can can, can break. So, so this default parameter is one GV, so I think this means that whenever the string fragmentation has broken into pieces with the amount of mass less than one GeV, it stopped the process. Maybe that's uh, too large. So we, we retune this parameter down to almost zero. And indeed, this uh, tuning will soften these uh, fragmentation functions and actually agrees pretty well with the, the measurement. But of course, this is just one of the many parameters in this fragmentation model, and in the future, we may need more systematic tuning in this baseline measurement. And apart from that, you can also test more differential measurement in uh, E-deuteron collisions. Like in this case, you first slice the particles, in this case, pi, pi plus, in different Z range, and then you plot the transverse momentum distribution uh, relative to the incident photon. And in this case, uh, 
it, after we, we fix that uh, uh, fragmentation parameters, everything went pretty well, uh, up to pt equals to 1 gv. So the source of this finite pt protein, even in the different collisions in PCA, comes from two primary sources. One is that in this type of event generators, it will uh, produce a primordial quark kt from the uh, revolving motion in the, of this quark inside the, 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 the proton. And in this, this case, this is prime tracer the Gaussian with a wet that slowly grows with the virtuality of the collisions. On the other hand, in the fragmentation process, you also get another uh, transverse momentum kick due to the long stream breaking, which gives you another Gaussian with about uh, 0.3 GeV uh, at, the, at the wave. OK. Now we have checked that this uh, baseline works to satisfactory level. We will go ahead and look at uh, the nuclear modifications. First, let's look at the fragmentation functions. So in this case, the fragmentation functions, we first look at this dependence on the uh, ZH, which is the hydro energy fraction relative to the incident photons energy. And what's plotted here is the nuclear modification factor is the per trigger multiplicity of hydrons with uh, energy fraction ZH in EA collisions divided by that in E neutron collisions. And you can see that this uh, suppression, uh, in general, is a suppression, and the level of suppression gradually grows uh, once you. To the Hermes data, you will see two colors. One corresponds to using the generalized uh, form of medium correction to reditive process. Another one used the higher twist expanded form of medium corrections to reditive process. And in each of these colors, we have a band, which corresponds to the variation of the effective Q hat from 0.01 to 0.04 GV square per fermion. And this solid line is, uh, since the value in the middle is 0.02, about, about 0.02. So here are some uh, uh, observations that we mentioned very earlier, is that uh, with the same Q, uh, elastic Q hat as input, the generalized formula will result in less radiative energy loss of the leading part. The, the generalized results are uh, high, uh, our, our A values are higher than the one if you turn on the higher twist the, the correction. And this will has an impact if you want to use this parameter to extract Q hat, even though this is very sensitive to the value of this Q hat parameters. So if you if you try to compare it to data, you will probably result in the almost a factor of two differences depending on which approximation you use. And uh, you can also look at the transverse momentum that depends on these modifications. Uh, on average, it's a, a broadening effect. So it means that the momentum, uh, sorry, momentum will be shifted to larger PT. And therefore, when you take the ratios, it will uh, it shows like a monotonic increase of this uh, ratio. As a function of p, and similar story compared with the generalized higher twist, uh, generalized and higher twist formula, is that uh, the generalized formula may need a slightly larger q hat in order to describe this uh, observables. Of course, this uh, we, if we only look at the, the inclusive zh distribution or pd distribution, we cannot really uh, in the interplay of energy loss and momentum broadening. So another more detailed way to look at this data is to look at this double differential measurement. Here you first slice particles into different energy fractions from uh, low energy uh, hydrons to high energy. And then you plot the PT modifications for each of them. So here is uh, some features. Of all, if you focus on the very large C hydrons, the ratio is below one because their energy loss, large C hydrons are lost to lower C. 
Second, this ratio is quite flat. So there's no more change in the shape of the PT distribution. So this can be understood as a kind of, let's call it survival bias, is because all those hydrons that have suffered a transverse momentum kick also induce significant energy loss, which transfer them into lower Z, lower Z H beams. So those hydrons that still left in this higher Z regions, their momentum, their, their momentum distributions are less unchanged. Well, this is not the case for lower Z hydrons where you can see clearly effects from momentum broadening. Okay, for those experiments that's for analysis interested in different hydrons, uh, and in the future, we'll also consider heavy quark, heavy flavor. We, here we can, uh, right now we only can consider pi kp. And for, for pi, the top row is the modification of fragmentation for pi plus and pi zero, uh, quite similar story. But since it becomes very different if you consider, let's just look at uh, that difference is uh, very, very large. So you, you look at the proton, you notice that this modification at low Z is very different between uh, proton and antiproton, but it's not so different in our simulations. This may suggest the importance of uh, either the, the nuclear absorption of antiquark or antiproton. So whether it's antiquark or antiproton really depends on the, when you consider the system to, 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 to form into a hydron system. So that's where the formation time com comes into play. So in the future, we may consider uh, connect this uh, parton shower plus hydron addition with the transport model in order to, to figure out what, what exactly is the, the physics that governs this low Z region. Uh, similar story for K plus K minus, you also have uh, slightly different valence structures and resulting in different uh, uh, nuclear absorption power of K plus and K minus. Furthermore, for K plus K minus, uh, to seriously discuss their production in medium, we may also need to consider the medium induced pair production from gluon to QQ bar, in this case, strange pair, which has not been implemented yet, but this will be left for future improvements. Okay. So we have seen that this fragmentation function measurement really depends on uh, which approximation that you use, whether it's generalized formula or expanded to higher twist. Now we look at a more direct measurement of the momentum problem, which is the, the figure that I, I showed at the very beginning, is the average PT square subtracted uh, uh, between uh, EA collisions and ED collisions. And this is the uh, transverse moment borne as a function of ZH for, again, for the four nucleus. Uh, at uh, small to intermediate ZH, they, both of them actually describe the data reasonably, but the more important message is that for this observable, it is indeed less sensitive to how you model the fragmentation process, whether you use general higher twist or, or whether it's use the generalized formula or the higher twist formula, they kind of give you the similar magnitude, but more de depends on the, the Q height that we put in. An uh, interesting discrepancy is that at large Z, the data suddenly drops uh, beyond the H about 0.6. Uh, this is qualitatively described in, in the simulation due to the survival bias that I talk about, basically to produce a hydron at ZH equals to one, carrying almost all its initial energies. It cannot suffer, suffer too much uh, momentum broken, which induces energy loss. But this drop in the current simulation uh, seems to come too late. So maybe the data suggests the survival bias is, is even stronger than currently uh, modeled, which is quite interesting uh, uh, thing to, to investigate in the future. Okay. Finally, we will also look at this uh, momentum broadening as a function of XP. Uh, uh, of course, in, 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 the, in the Hermes data, this uh, XP uh, will only extend to 0.02 because it's a fixed target program. It cannot access very low X. But for future uh, 
EIC and maybe EICC, as you can see by the kinematic plots on the left, it can push this uh, type of measurement maybe almost down to 10 to the minus 3 or minus 4 even. And in this region, that's where you really start to be sensitive to our uh, parameterization of the small, what, what, what the small x gluon looks like in the nucleus. Uh, remember that we, we parameterize the increase of q hat as, uh, as function of xb, but if you only look at the Hermes uh, kinematic range, we are not so sensitive to this uh, increase in tail yet. And remember that the multiple collisions involve the longitudinal moment fraction of the gluon to be much smaller than xb. So when you focus on the moment, uh, momentum broadening of, for example, xb equals to uh, a hundredth, you are actually contributed by uh, other gluons that are much uh, more softer than that. Okay, let me see. Okay, in the this final few minutes, I will talk about uh, another interesting measurement that Hermes is the mod media modification of the double hydron fragmentations. So previously, I've been talking a lot about uh, whether we need to consider hydronic transport in this low energy DIS collisions, and maybe for some phase-based regions of high, higher energy collisions. Uh, originally, this measurement of medium modified double hydron modifications is kind of target to answer this question. Uh, so at that moment, the picture that people have in mind is that uh, if the parton first lose energy in the medium and then fragments into a bunch of hydrons, then this double hydron modification will share the common modification of the same par parton in that inside the medium. So when you take the ratio, you shouldn't get too strong dependence on Z2 and on, on, on how much energy uh, each of them lose. On the other hand, if the hydrons are formed inside the medium, then this double hydron will actually lead and subleading hydron will lose energy independently. And clearly this cross section will depend on <clears throat> the, the, the energy in the rest of the nucleus and depends strongly on Z2. Uh, of course, the realistic situation is always <clears throat> not always the, these two extremes. For example, if you consider hydron hydronization also comes with a formation time, uh, you, 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 you do have this uh, lower Z hydron maybe uh, formed first, and then uh, more collinear hydrons are formed later. And if you start to consider uh, high Q square QCD corrections, uh, then you, you, you can have different uh, partonic sources lose energy independently in, in, in the medium and then fragments into, into hydrons. So, so it's not uh, a, 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 a clear distinction between the two, but uh, uh, you do have some uh, complications due to these uh, corrections. Currently, uh, in our e hygiene models, we have considered the case uh, over here and also the uh, corrections from the parton shower. Uh, right now, we, don't, we haven't included the, the, the uh, any hydronic energy loss yet, so, so these two cases are not considered in the current framework. And if you compare this to the experimental measurement of this medium modifications to double hydron, distribution, uh, we find the, first of all, quite a good agreement uh, if Z2 is large, uh, from this is nitrogen to xenon nucleus. At small z, we do see that, okay, here we, we start to uh, maybe over, uh, overestimate the data, but of course, the uncertainty is still, is still quite large. Uh, but there are indeed room for the hydronic energy loss or absorptions especially for, for hydrons created at, at low energies. So maybe with future uh, more, more uh, few future colliders and much higher statistics to measure this uh, hydron production at low Z, uh, we will need, uh, we can pin down in which phase space that we do need to include hydronic, uh, hydronic effect. Okay, then in summary, uh, I present you uh, our idea for the design of the e-hygiene uh, event generators for future jet tomography physics at EIC. Uh, it uh, contains the multiple jet nucleus collisions, a medium modified parton shower, 
and the modified hazard relations, we have a sensitivity analysis on, uh, on, on Q height using various uh, observables performed at uh, uh, the Hermit experiment, including DNS, uh, sorry, 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 series measurement, momentum broadening, and also the double hydron correlations. Uh, in the near future, we will find more applications to future ESC and ESCC, including both hydronic and uh, jet observables in the future. Uh, and we will also consider so several theoretical improvements, like the interplay of uh, quark transfers momentum initially and the medium modifications, uh, medium pyre production and flavor changing processes to refine our description of different species of hydron. And finally, uh, we will consider to integrate this model into the Netscape event generator envelope. In that case, we will have uh, easy interface to other uh, well-tested uh, models such as those provide hydronic transport. Okay, and I will take uh, questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for the talk. <clears throat> so um, we have some time, a few minutes for comments and questions from the audience. Yeah, Peter, go ahead. Uh, hi, hi, well, yeah, thanks um, for a very nice talk. Um, I want to come back to this question you raised at the beginning about um, the relationship between momentum broadening and hadronic collisions and momentum broadening in DIS. I think it was slide four. Let me go back there. Uh, yeah, this one? Slide, four, slide four. Oh, four, okay. Yeah, I, I actually have a very different view of this. I don't think inclusive measurements and hydronic collisions is the right way to measure momentum broadening exactly because of the reason you say you don't have control of the orientation. You actually need to do a coincidence measurement. That's exactly what we're doing, mm -hmm. triggering on a hadron or photon and looking at the angular deviation of the recoil jet relative to an axis defined, defined by hadron or photon and we're measuring a coplanarity. So, and this has also been calculated by the CCNU group, uh, Guan Yu yeah, yeah. and um, ON and collaborators, and in hadronic collisions, there's sort of the, the baseline is a Sudikov broadening. Um, you didn't use the word Sudikov here, and I was wondering whether there is actually a connection between that formalism and the formalism you have outlined here. Would you be able to apply your formalism or make a connection to your formalism to hadronic collisions? And I think this is of actually deep interest in Jetscape Xscape. We will be, you know, Calculating the, these a coplanarity uh, measurements in in PP and AA in Xscape, and if we could uh, do the same with your formalism, understand the connection between them, that may actually be quite an interesting connection. So, how would you connect your your calculation to hadronic collisions, to Zudikov broadening, and eventually to these a coplanarity measurements that we've been making? Uh, you mean uh, so by hydronic collisions, you mean the the DIS, right? No, I mean PP and, and AA. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Uh, I see. Okay. Uh, so, so in this case, uh, if you try to relate this Q height with those, uh, like, if you, uh, I think you, you talk about photon jet and uh, digest correlations, right? Sorry, I didn't understand what you said. Oh. Okay, so uh, yeah, I mean, uh, this currently we, we, the, the use of this inclusive hydron suppression is really by uh, relating this Q height to energy loss. I mean, we um, need to go. I would set the inclusive aside. I think it's the wrong way to do it. We should do. You should. The measurements are coincidence measurements. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and yeah. And then in this case, if you measure the, you know, that we, don't measure, we don't measure PT broadening. We do measure angular broadening. We don't. We measure the Launch the jet energy and and the angular swelling, if you like. Yes, and, and that's that's definitely a, should, should provide much more direct access to a transfers broadening, right? Because that's so. So, what's the connection between your formalism and the kind of Sudikov formalism that's used by Bowen and company? Uh, you mean the, the formalism in this? Oh, you mean the formalism in, uh, sorry, which, which formalism you're, you're talking about? 
Maybe, maybe we take it offline. Yes, I, I, I'm not sure you're <laughs> perhaps not. I, I, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure which okay, thanks. calculation for uh, Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, okay, we are very nice talk. Uh, can you go uh, come back to your EIC prediction? So, so my question is that the this uh, delta p per square uh, increases a small x, right? Uh, this is because q hat dependence, uh, because the q hat change, or it's because yeah. the kinematics in your in your formula. Oh, okay. So yeah, I should provide more more details. So. Uh, First of all, this uh, delta PT square only includes uh, large Z particles, like Z greater than 0.2, I think in this case. And indeed, we do parameterize a Q height that grows with uh, XB. Uh, I kind of need to, to jump back to that figure. But here. Yeah, of course, in this case, I only plot it up to uh, 10 to the minus two, but uh, uh, at smaller x, we, we only parameterize like a, a power law dependence of q hat uh, on uh, one over x. So you indeed you have this increased behavior as we parameterize what well, this q hat depends on x b. So that that q hat, so it's like a small x q saturation scale. It's like a, uh, let me see, it's like a. Uh, was one over x to the oh I see I see so that's yes. we, we do put in like a microscopic assumption of, of what what type of gluons we can probe at uh, small x. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So your argument basically is because at a smaller x per kin you probe a smaller uh, x g. Is that right? Uh, yes. Yeah, because at least if you consider this collisions are indeed dominated by uh, the so-called elastic collisions, then you do need xg to be much smaller than xb. Uh, but but my naive understanding, maybe I should think about more about this, because my naive understanding, for example, if you have a incoming quark, a uh, scattering nuclear target, the T channel gluon basically carries zero momentum fraction, right? Uh, uh, yeah. I, I, almost. I don't quite, uh, I, I still think about, I uh, need to think about how you actually parameter this, why this has to depend on the expert king instead oh. it just depends on the density of the matter. Uh, well, uh... It, so, so first of all, it does depend on the density of the matter. Uh, so this is just uh, the distribution for one nucleons, and then eventually you also need to multiply it by the thickness. Yes, uh, that I agree. So that's the density. And sure. then regarding the X dependence, is currently this XB, uh, sorry, this XG in related to XB is, uh, is basically come from, from this, uh, region. So we consider this uh, collision to be elastic means that this uh, outgoing uh, quark should should not be, be be changed by a lot in virtuality. Uh -huh. um, okay. Okay. So that's that's your that's 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 where the dependence come from. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I mean, it's basically in, in in this formula, right? So. Yeah. I mean, in experiment, in reality, it could be different. Yeah, of course, especially when you- uh, uh, so, so this actually back to Peter's question. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious how, how you can also generate this to, to PA collision, for example. Oh, I don't oh. know if you and Shinya have any plan to, to, to have uh, whatever 
you now have the E hydrogen. Maybe you have A hydrogen, right? <laughs> oh, I think of course. Yeah, I think I, I know. I understand. Well, what's your what's your question? So, so it's just it's whether this whole whole framework can be applied to PA and AA. Okay. No, uh, it's, uh, I mean, AA is actually PA or hydrogen, right? PA. So I, I'm curious about the PA. Uh, well, in principle, in principle, one can extend this to PA, yes. Okay. Yeah, in AA, uh, I think a lot of the more difficulties come from the, the medium itself, right? Where we don't really have a... a like a good agreement on how yeah, to but fan fan essentially talking about the uh, in PA there could also be similarly like in DIS there could be initial state multiple interaction and uh, and then yeah. that that give us rise to PD broad in PA too. But to sorry if I may to come back to my question um, if one can to verify the formalism in in EA and PA um, seems to me that you know comparison to AA may, may be a tool to actually understand the medium. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. if we embed this well, into embed this into Jetscape with additional you know mechanism. I, I fully support. I mean, we have various points. You you were talking about the correlation between energy loss and PT broadening. I mean, it's very intuitive, and I, I think it must be correct. Um, and it's something that. The you know the quark gluon plasma field has not really addressed in any serious way yet. So if this if there are the theoretical frameworks that allow us to do that, that's extremely uh, extremely valuable and important. I see. I see. Yeah, yeah, that I agree. Yeah, I think for PA, uh, I think if we apply this to either to very forward particle productions and include. Uh, this initial state moment broadness uh, could be could be a cool. I, I just don't know how much uh, of a change we need right now to do that. Well, I mean, to answer Peter's question, yes, uh, this formula, this formalism, you can see they they include both the vacuum radiation and medium induced. The vacuum radiation essentially is the sort of uh, yeah. broadening. And but we uh, this framework is much more because we somehow we through this uh, this uh, formula we couple the medium induced and uh, the uh, the vacuum together, and then um, there should so in this case you not only see PD broadening due to pseudo core, but you also see PD broadening due to induced radiation and also initial scattering. Yeah, that that, that is true. Yes. Well, that's that's it all sounds sounds very uh, very promising. I just well, offline I'll I'll send you these you know this calculation. Let's continue the discussion. I really would like to understand the the you know the the degree to which you are reproducing the Sudikov calculation, the degree to which you go beyond it. So that'd be very important to try to understand. That's the okay. So so answer your question, Peter. I I I know this calculation because I'm part of that. So. Uh, part and shower take care of the pseudocop effects. So if if hygiene in the hygiene simulation there there is part and shower from PCR uh, yeah. uh, or whatever, that effect has been taken care. Of. Mm -hmm. So there's no there's no no question about that. Yes, yeah. but it's if I understand correctly, I mean what that's once you have medium effects, it's not just these are not incoherent. One has to you know account for all the interferences, and I'm sure that's Kind of in your in your formalism, so it's 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 um, kind of just a shower is is a sort of classical picture. It seems to me there's kind of more subtle quantum mechanics in there, but okay, we can discuss that offline. Yeah, I, actually, the I think the, the particle shower. I mean, that's not like class. You have classical particles branching, but uh, uh, the way it branches in like the descending orders of. PT or why we can do this branching like a Monte Carlo, that, that do have some quantum motivations uh, in, the, in the back. Okay, so any other question? Great, we already a uh, little bit over time. So um, I guess we can continue the offline discussion and, uh, and, and we all will be here until the end of this month. <laughs>